Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you know, today is an amazing day. Today, we've entered a new month. Happy new month to you guys. The significance of the month of October, okay, and actually the number itself speaks to Jubilee. Amen? So we're in a time now, we're coming out of birthing gifty to now where the baby's here and we're going to celebrate the baby. Hallelujah. So all your promises are going to start showing up this month. Am I speaking to you? Anybody agree with me today? Amen. This is the time to start believing that God's promises for your life are yes and amen. Hear me. I just came to bring you all a joyful word today. Hopefully you guys will get it. For those of you who may not get it, those that are watching by live stream today, I grab, I'm encouraging you, grab your pen and paper. Because I'm not going to be in front of you long. I'm just going to give you some pointers. Hear me. And then I'm going to go into preaching. Are you with me? Because in this season, God is about to give you the power to overcome the elements that will prevent you from going forward and fulfilling the assignments on your life. Are you with me? So today I'm going to speak to you from the subject matter, don't be afraid. Say, don't be afraid of failure. We're in a time now where we cannot allow ourselves to get caught up with the dictates and opinions of other people and the challenges and the, and the, and the external attacks that we may encounter that will prevent us from going forward. Amen? Amen. I'm speaking to y'all from a place where if you go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we'll start there. That's my scripture reference. Then I'm going to talk to you about this thing called failure. Hallelujah. You're with me? Good, good, good. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, I'm going to read it. In the New King James Version, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. And of love and of a sound of mind. He's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If you look at the person standing up next to you and you sense any, any, any feeling of fear, that means they are feeling a way that is based upon things that are happening in their lives. When you look at the word spirit of fear, the, the spirit there is a small letter S, which means it speaks to, right? Not that has been given to us by the Holy Spirit, but that which has been developed within us by the way we live. It speaks to the mindset, the spirit, the attitude that the person might have. The spirit of fear speaks to the mindset, the attitude, the condition of the heart, hear me, that creates the feeling of fear when trouble arises. We all have been there. When something comes up against us that we don't understand where it's coming from or it might be insurmountable. It might be something that we've never heard before or it will show up in a way where we least expected. The first thing that grips our heart is the fear. Oh my God, how am I going to handle this? This is practical. Every one of us, including the pastor, has gone through a moment where fear has crept up on me, even though I know the word. Can I get an amen? amen? Yeah, I ain't perfect. I'm not perfect. But I do know this. Sometimes we have to pause in the midst of chaos. And remember what God said to us, that when trouble arises, he's with me. He's standing with me, right, Brother Augustine? And as long as I know God is with me, Mama Tafin, it doesn't matter what will show up. And even if that little spark of fear may come, if I pause and breathe and remember what my father promised me, I will shake it off. You see, fear can come off of you no matter what it looks like, no matter how big the crisis. Hear me? Because you serve a God that's bigger than your fear. Ah, uh, am I speaking to you? You serve a God that's bigger than your fear. And if you have nothing else to say, you do know one thing to be true. The Holy Spirit in you empowers you to look at every situation, every circumstance, and say, with my God, all things are possible. So yes, you may come against me one way, 
But at the end of the day, based upon my faith to believe what my God said concerning my life, I begin to speak contrary to what it is I'm looking at. Yes, you're there. I can see you, but you can't overtake me. Yes, you're there. I can see you, but you won't win in this matter. Am I speaking to you? You can come seven ways at me, but as long as I'm a child of God, I get the victory. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. Can I keep going? Hallelujah. God is good. Hey, GCI, I want you to know God is good. And as long as we don't allow ourselves to get caught up in this thing called fear or this foolishness, then we can win every time. We win every time. You hear me? On the other hand of life, when we start to look at the various types of fear, we know that people talk about the fear of speaking, the, the, the fear of spiders. You know, every, you know, there's some grown men I know afraid of, of spiders. Amen. They see a spider, they go get their wife. Oh, baby, come, you see? I know grown men that were afraid of rats. The mice pass, he jumped on the bed, then he tells his wife, crush his head. Hallelujah. But these are some of the fear, Dennis, that we have. Hear me. Then, of course, we have all of these other ones. But on the other hand, what we might not hear often is the issue of the fear of failure. I'm afraid to fail. Why, why is it that some people will be in this position, Lady Wynn? Why? What are some of the reasons why we will have this fear of failure? Number one, because of upbringing sometimes. How we're raised. Oh, don't go there. Oh, don't do that. Now, you, you pay attention to babies, right? When they come, they got no fear. Babies are teaching us how to look at things and go after it. If I call that little girl right now with a red ball in my hand, she would jump off her mama's lap, come running to me, and everybody that tried to stop her, she's going to try to fight them. Why? I see something I want, and I'm going for it. You know what that tells me? It tells me when God created us, he didn't give us fear. It is our surrounding and our upbringing that began to create in us the feeling of fear. What if you were to be born and raised to never fear anything? How much more you think you can accomplish in life? Can I speak to you today? Amen? So we have our kids not just to have them, to teach them, but also they teach us things that sometimes when we get older we forget, my Mary. Am I speaking to y'all? The second thing that we see as to why it is we have fear, because of someone who will condemn us. We are afraid to fail because of what we think somebody might say, says Connie, that's been around us all along. And maybe every time we tried something and it didn't work for us, this person had something to say. Some of us have heard these words before, good for nothing. You think you got something. Uh-huh. Every time you try. But here's the funny part. Hear me. Here's the funny part. Most of those people that would do that, if you ask them, have you ever done it before? They will be the first to tell you they've never done it. But, but I know about it. I ask you if you know about it, have you done it? Some of us have stopped some of the greatest minds from fulfilling destiny on the earth because we tell them they cannot. But I've come to tell you today, if you allow yourself to fall prey to the dictates and opinions of other people, when God has called you to do something that you know in your heart, it's for you to do. Let me tell you how we find out what God has called us to do sometimes. Sometimes it's the thing that annoys us the most. When we walk into a space or we see it, it just gets on our last nerve. Guess what? That's what God called you to fix. Mm -hmm. I know I can't stand this order. I cannot stand any mediocrity. You want to get on my, oh, you want to get on my bad side? Don't have anything of order about your life. You just go in life. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be. Let me tell you something. A great man once said, a great man once said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. What are you going for? 
What is this next year going to look like for you? I know some of you, 2023 may not have been a good year. And for some of us, 2023 had us stuck in the middle of the mountain going up. That's mediocrity. But if we keep pushing until we get to the top, here's the promise. You will see further. You will see what God has for you at a higher level. When God says come up hither, he's not telling you to just come up in a physical mean. He's trying to give you revelation that will show you a greater side of him. And when you get that revelation, uh, Ezekiel, you now start to see what God has for you. Am I speaking to you? So fear of failure is simply positioning us to not dare greatly. I'd rather just do enough to get by. Who told you that's how God made you? You don't see anywhere in between Genesis chapter 1 where it says that, oh, and you shall have dominion halfway. And you shall multiply part time. And you shall rule only on Tuesdays and on Sundays. Every other thing you do in life, you just do it haphazardly because you're afraid to fail. Am I speaking to you? Failure isn't fatal, family. But failure, listen to me, to change might be. There's some people when they fail, they stop living. There's some people when they get hit by life so hard and they fall, they don't choose to get up anymore. I'd rather stay down here than to feel that pain I felt when Junior walked out on me. And I'm not talking about my boy. Amen. I'm just giving you an analogy. Some people stop living when what they put everything into quit on them. And when it quits on them, sis Connie, they quit too. The devil is a liar. As long as you got breath in your life and God allows you to see another day, you'll listen to me. Failure is not final. And failure is not fatal. It's all about your perspective of that issue that defines how it is you move forward. But today we're going to talk about it. Say talk, pass aside, talk. Because of personal insecurities and inadequacies, we are afraid to fail. We're afraid to even try. But AGCI, that's not going to be our portion. With our God, all things are possible. Hear me. We got to shift the way we think about the way life goes for us from this moment forward. Yes, I may have lost this, but it doesn't mean I stop living. You see, because the next day God allows me to live, he's allowing me to keep going forward. Family, look at the human makeup. Everything about your body is a forward motion. Your eyes are not in the back of your head. It's in front of you. Your arms are not designed to be like this. They go forward. Ah, when you lift your arms up, your fingers are pointing forward. Am I speaking to you? The whole front portion of me speaks to going forward. My shoes, forward. The whole part of my life. Every, everything that allows me to be and to do is forward. So when God made you, he never made you to keep going backwards. And going forward sometimes will require you to fail along the way. Anybody ever failed a test before? Uh-huh. Sometimes the lack of preparation or poor preparation leads to poor performance. Hear me. So sometimes we're not prepared. But I've come to decree over your life. Moving forward, as we continue to go, you will have the mindset to be prepared because you never know when opportunity is going to come knocking. And when you are fully prepared, when opportunity knocks on your door, success is birth. Am I speaking to your family? I come against every insecurity that has been trying to lurk in your life and hold you back. I come against the feeling of inadequacy. Because of lack of knowledge, sometimes we don't want to even attempt to go after something. We feel we got to know everything before we do it. That's not true. Some of us learn best by doing. So I dare you, if that's what you want, throw your heart over the fence and let your body follow. 
Stop trying to overcalculate. Sometimes God will tell you to do certain things and not even give you a roadmap. He did it with Abraham. He said, leave your father's house and come and let me show you a place that I'm going to send you. What did Abraham do? Abraham got up and started walking. May you start walking in this season. When God says move, you get up and move. Hear me? May you get up and start moving. Because your promise is ahead of you. It's not behind you. How we break, how we break some of the pain in our lives is when we get up, dust ourselves off. Wash off the old. Wash off the old. You look better clean. Shamakataba. She leaves you, you're still wearing the same shirt you had on the day she walked out. Boy, get up, go wash your clothes. Go, go, go find a new suit. That new suit will give you a different feeling, give you a different attitude about yourself. In fact, stand up, look in the mirror, and start to talk to yourself. Because sometimes that's what's required. You can sit here and pray all day long. God has already given you the power to overcome. But you're waiting for God to come down with Jesus and Peter, James, and John to come transform your life. The devil is a liar. You have already been given the power to do so. We don't fail, except if we choose to. Am I speaking to you? Glory to God. Because of un, uh, uh, um, relinquished past failures. You failed before, Mama Tafi. But what, they, what we tend to do sometimes is we hold on to the remembrance of that thing and how bad we fail. So I'm here holding on to my past failures, and God is showing me other ways for me to go forward and do better. But I still want to hold on to this because I got something to be connected to to remind me. Mm. He said, cast your cares upon me, for it is I who care for you. Hear me. Come unto me, all those that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Have we learned how to just take the mess and give it to him? Sometimes the very people that hurt us most are living right there. Some of us are sleeping with the enemy. But when you have the peace of God in you, when you have the strength and the power of God in you, hear it, I didn't give you the spirit of fear, but of power. That means no matter what they do, how they do it, put on power. When you put on power, it bounces off of you. The words bounce off of you. The attacks bounce off of you. And you keep walking straight. Hallelujah. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Do not be afraid to fail. Failure makes room for you to learn more. Failure shows you a better way to deal with the problem. And if you're paying attention, every time you fail, you just learn a better way to make it happen. As long as you don't quit. Am I speaking to you? Am I speaking to you? Because of low self-esteem and not feeling good enough for the job. I've, I, have seen, I have seen people where God has opened doors for them to step into a job, says Connie, they didn't qualify for but the CEO thought enough of them because the CEO was watching how they handled customer, how they took care of the team, how they serve. The CEO said, I don't have anybody in my top line that has this person's spirit. So I want you all to go get him, her, and bring her and offers them a job. I have, I have had positions created so I could walk in it that I didn't qualify for. He who is faithful over little, God will give you much. Am I speaking to you? Say, I'm in my much season. Okay, I'm going I'm to say it another way. I'm in the time where I'm going to be such a much. You're in your much season, the educated people. I'm in my much season. 
Pastor Sam, I'm not going to say that's such a much. That doesn't rhyme. Glory to God. What is failure? What is failure, family? Failure, listen to this, failure should be our teacher. Failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. When you fail, you don't die. You try again. I heard that. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I say it this way, Dennis. Try, 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 try. Get up, try, 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 try. And keep trying until your try turns to triumphant and victory. Am I speaking to you? You see, because the devil already knows your, your future is victorious. He just wants you to quit somewhere in the middle because life has dealt you a blow. But let me tell y'all, you all are champions. Every morning you wake up, tell yourself that. I got victory in Jesus. I don't know what my day is going to be like, but I do know when I start this day and I reach my point, I am going to win at every step of the way. If I fail at it, I will do it better tomorrow. Some of us have perfected a thing. But because we failed at it so many times. First time I preach, man, y'all are going to laugh at me. Anyway, that's pastor. I ain't telling you my business. Failure, Rita, is delay, but it's not defeat. And sometimes we fail because we jump ahead of God. Many failed marriages because we never took the time to investigate who it was that came into our lives. And we got caught up with the physical appearance, but we never really tapped into the spiritual side of that individual. We didn't ask questions. We didn't probe. We didn't push the wrong button accidentally but intentionally just to see how they're going to act if they lose their cool. Will you call me outside my name? But we marry because we're infatuated. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. Then the pride of life is when you marry him or her and they, they look real good and you walk out and you think you have arrived. Not knowing when you leave there tonight and go home, you're going to get slapped and beat down. Am I speaking to you? I'm coming down your aisle now, you know. I'm, try I'm trying to reach you right where you are. Failure. It is a temporary detour. It's not a dead end. Many people think that when they fail, life stops. That's not true. That's why they don't try any further. Because sometimes the pain that comes from it it's too much to bear, so I quit. I sit down. Failure is something we can avoid only by, only by saying nothing, doing nothing, and being nothing. You want to fail in life? Don't do anything. Don't try. Just live your life anyhow. God made you for a reason. You wake up, uh, I'm not going to try. By doing nothing, you never know what you're capable of. By saying nothing in moments when people are downplaying you, you never know the power of your voice. Am I speaking to y'all today? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 We're in a powerful house. Failure is many. I mean, failure to many is equal to a curse. Some people think when they fail in life, they're cursed. I challenge you today. Your failure because you're in the same place trying to dig in the same ground, trying to do the same thing that caused the confusion, and you think it's supposed to change. That's insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. It's until you step up and decide that I cannot do this anymore, and I expect better. Here, here's the thing. When we fail in a, in, a, in, a, in a relationship, it's not about the other person. It's about you. Investigate your life. Ask 
yourself the question, where did I miss it? Am I really not worth this? Huh? Because some people will try to demean your value to appraise theirs. I know God didn't born me, create me to be some fluky. Are you with me? Brother Augustine, you with me, brother? Mm -hmm. You're great. You are great. Hear me. I'm not just standing here to blow horn. You are great. Lock it in. You too, Flo. You're great. Lock it in. Lock it in. You see, you teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to care for you. You don't take your good life God has given and give it to somebody and expect them to care when they know nothing about what it is you have. And what, where it is we don't know what God is giving to us sometimes. Abuse is inevitable. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 I feel the spirit of Frank DeMoss upon me. He preached, let me go there. He preached the other day, and he was talking about water coming out of a rock. God told Moses, speak to the rock. But because of the way the people's attitudes were, it vexed Moses. And instead of speaking to the rock, Moses took the staff and hit the rock. Here is the revelation for us today. In your hard places, God still has the power to give you life flow. Out of hard places and hard times, God can bring evidence of life. You got to call it. Don't hit it, call it. Regardless of what people may say, you may be standing there in a hard place, right? You're going through a hard time. Everybody around you sees it, and then you start to hear the chatter. I don't know why you're pretending like you got a God and you're talking like it's going to happen. Oh, you want to talk your God thing? Go ahead. But we're all looking at how hard it is for you. That's all right. I'm speaking to my hard place. I'm calling life out of my hard place. I'm calling honey out of a rock. Hear me? You see, because I serve a God that can give me whatever it is I need. And to y'all, y'all may think I'm failing, but for me, God has already demonstrated that if I come through this, my blessing is on the other side. And if we don't say it, we won't see it. That's the difference between us and the world. We look at things. And we call them to be out of that which isn't. So what? You walk away. So what? We look many. I would stand here every day, stretch my hand to the north, south, east, and west. And may my voice go fishing. And bring those that need to be saved, delivered, set free for the kingdom of God. Hear me. And it's not about what anybody else thinks. It's about God and his will and his call on our lives to do better, be better, be greater. Ah. I hope I'm not yelling. Glory to God. Failure in many individuals or too many individuals is an indicator of worthlessness. A feeling of inadequacy, a sign that says quit. This is not for you. How many times have you told yourself that when things are not going right? I quit. I can't take it no more. I'm done. I'm done. So you quit in the middle of your breakthrough. There's some of us with all the struggles we've been going, we've been getting. And it is when we get right here at the, at the point of your breakthrough, the, because the very next decision, the very next step you take walks you into the promise of God. 
But we get here where it looks like the work is even harder. So we start to say to ourselves, Junior, all these steps I've been taking, it's been tough on me, but I've overcome, I've overcome. Okay, excuse me. But when I get to this place, it seems like the volume or the, or the has gotten worse. But let me tell you something. It is at the darkest moment in life that your breakthrough is around the corner. And if you stay the course, if you stay the course, your very next decision to stand, God ushers you in to what he promised you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We will not quit before we break through. We will not quit at the cups of our deliverance. We will not quit when it seems like nothing is working for us. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I will not be afraid to fail my life was not designed for me to just live any kind of way a great oak tree has to be planted in mess we are developed in the mess we have to take root in the mess and if we don't take root in the mess when it's our time to break out, we don't have substance. We don't have foundation. We don't have the ability to stand the winds and the world and all of the elements that will come against us. That's why God designed us to go through life the way we have. If you're not failing, you're not learning. Are you with me? What is failure? The fear of failure, listen to me family. The fear of failure is an internal assessment of your ability to do a task while telling yourself that you can't do it based on personal and external factors. I say it again the fear of failure is an internal assessment of your ability to do a task while telling yourself you can't do it based on personal and external factors how many of us have made decisions based upon what other people had to say and we never we never went to God to talk to him about it In the middle of the night, God wakes you up at 2 o'clock in the morning. He gives you this idea. You write it down. But yet, the next one you wake up, you call Sally, Susie, and all of them as opposed to talking to God about what God just gave you. You talk to Ray Ray Pookie and them who ain't going nowhere. Blind leading the blind. God trying to take you out of that and put you in a different category. But you go talk to the same people that are still back there. You think they're going to be happy for you trying to exit? Oh, that just sounds too, uh, too big. I don't know if you got the capacity to do it. Go to New York. Hmm. You can't even live in Greenville, South Carolina. How you going to make it in New York? I'm going to America. Hmm. Yeah, that's what you say. We are all here. We'll see. And when you're excited about it, right? And you go around them and you're excited. I got my visa. I got my stuff. Oh, man. Let people hear. Hmm. My Liberian family understand what I'm saying? Go sit down somewhere where you got me. Okay, you got it now. So what? Yeah. Here's the funny part, mama. Then when you travel, right? Remember now, they're the same ones making noise, old gifty. Mm, got it, huh? 
But as soon as you hit, and after a year or so, your phone rings. Uh, one month, eh? Okay. So how everything going? Oh, I'm fine. Hmm. You not forget us, so. Hmm. You not throw us to the side, or. Oh, hmm. Yo, mm, we just yo. I'll call you for my Christmas. My chicken sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, little Mary is supposed to be a, a Christian tomorrow, and we just want to, you know, one cow. A whole cow, yeah. Because you know, enter them, mommy, all of them, they coming from the village. The whole time you're there, you ain't never seen none of these people. Who coming from the village? Oh, enter, man, you know where, enter, you did. All of the aunties, all of the grand aunties, all of the uncles, all of the, all the chiefs are coming, so we need libation. Am I speaking to y'all? They won't be happy sometime for your victory. Hear me. But you should never let that be the reason why you don't move in the blessings of God. Because if God has called you to it, he's already made a way for you to get it and get through it. It must speak into you. No matter how tough the test might be, you're going to get through the test. It must speak into you. So let's let's look at let's look at let's look at some reasons for this. Here are a few things that someone who has the fear of failure might do. Number one, they will avoid tasks. When the tasks are coming up, they run away from it because they don't want to fail. They they will also feel powerless because they don't want to fail. Oh, I've never done it before, so you know that's okay, y'all. And go. And mind you, they can if they put their minds to it. They can. The other thing is that the experiences, you know, the anxiety from past failure comes up. It rises up. So it's like, oh, my God, I, I went through that before. I ain't, going, I ain't doing it again. There are some women who have come through bad relationships, have been believing God for a blessed man to show up. They're Boaz. Hear me. The Boaz shows up, finds them in the field doing what they do, finds interest in them, but because... This other joker that left them hurt them so bad. They start to assess what God has brought to them from, the, from that light. And all of a sudden now, this brother is not worth being with her. Too scared. Don't want to get hurt again. If you've never really known what love looks like, how would you know what love feels like if you don't go through what love presents. Am I speaking to you? Love is living on various emotions. They're going to come. But first, more than anything, sweetheart, love is a choice. We choose to love. And when you choose to love, you overcome how. Am I speaking to you? I choose to love, regardless of what. That's why when you get married, it says in sickness and in health, for richer or for poor. In other words, there will be times in your life that when you're sick, do you want the person to walk away from you because you're sick? Love enables and empowers you to go through the ups and downs of life, the ebbs and flows, the vicissitudes of life. Love does that. You see, because if, if we really want to understand how much our God loves us, look at how many times we've messed up, yet and still he continues to show up for us. Yet and still he continues to tell us, you are my choice. You are the one I want. That's love. That's love. And if we're made in his image and his love is in us, we too have to demonstrate that love every time. When we fail to do so, it's because of the fear failing in the matter am i speaking to y'all today family hallelujah we're getting real close i'm almost done i'm almost done now let's look at some of the people what does the bible say about some of the characters that 
that had this inadequacy feeling, this fear of failure, number one was Moses. You all remember when God called Moses and Moses saw the fiery, you know, bush. First thing Moses started to tell God was what he couldn't do. <laughs> I, go, da, da, da. I can't, I can't, I can't speak. God, you sending me to go talk to, to, to Pharaoh? I can't, can't, I can't speak. I stutter, stutter. I stutter. Glory to God. Will you do it for me? God says, I know you stutter. I know you have a speech impediment, Moses. So I'm going to give you a helper. Aaron will speak for you, but through you, the demonstration of my power will show forth to let them know that you're not just anybody that's showing up. Don't you love it that God chooses the inadequate, the ones that don't have it all together to do the assignments he's called us to do? He's not saying you have to have it together, D. All he wants you to do is to say yes. In my brokenness, in my failures, some of the greatest preachers I know in my life were all drug dealers at one point in time who made a decision to serve God in the lowest point of their lives. If you be real, show me. One of them went into a hotel room to kill himself. The, the, the waitress at the restaurant across from the, ho from the hotel, the motel to be exact, when got there, handed him a John 3, 16 little note, booklet. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He read it while he was writing the last check to pay for his last meal. He picked it up again, he looked at it. And the words kept resonating with him. For God so loved. He so loved the world. I'm an example of the world. I'm broken. I'm busted. I'm a drug dealer. I've given up. I've, I've had multiple failures in marriage. And all of these things. How can you love me so much so that you are willing? He goes into the room. Puts it on the table strips himself and he said this is all I am I'm presenting everything I am to you if you are real show yourself I would get a call you know who the person is he didn't tell God the name I would get a call from this person and the words that person will say will seal the deal and I will serve you for the rest of my life One hour later, Jim. I stopped by a place to eat. I saw a car that looks like yours. But I don't think it's yours. A lady gave me a card that had John 3.16 on it. Just want to know how you doing, brother. How are you? That call changes life. He serves God today with everything he has. Our pastor, Dr. Godot, grew up in the streets, the hood, fighting, causing trouble. One day somebody told him about the love of Jesus at the lowest point of his life. God, if you be true. I'm in this room by myself. Show yourself. Who told you God can't find you? Who told you he can't meet you? And he wasn't all super spiritual. No. It was somebody that wanted to know your God. God will step over mountains. He will, he will move over things to get to you. He don't, it doesn't matter how many times you fail. It matters how many times you get up. 
and tell him thank you for another day for helping me to find my way I won't finish this but we will continue hear me when I say this to you Moses was in that category then everybody remember Jeremiah right Jeremiah was born to be a prophet God God had called this one from his mother's womb to be a prophet he comes into the earth realm hear me and then when God starts to tell him who he will be he said but God I'm a young man I don't, I don't have what I'm not like prophet Ezekiel who knows the Bible or prophet Frank who knows the Bible pastor Sai I'm not that I'm not Morris Sorello I'm not Bishop Benson Edohosa. I'm not Archbishop Duncan Williams. I'm none of these things. How can you call me to be at this age? A prophet to nations. I, uh, inadequacy. In other words, I don't meet the criteria to which you're describing. Fear. Failure. Then the other person we have is Gideon. You see, for, for Jeremiah, let's go back. As Jeremiah was talking, God said, okay, I'm going to help you. First of all, I'm going to give you vision. What do you see, Jeremiah? Jeremiah states it. Then the next thing he does, he then says to Jeremiah, well, if I called you to speak on my behalf, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. If God called you, he's going to give you what you need. He's going to equip you to do the work. Am I speaking to y'all? Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, family. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Then there's Gideon. Gideon, Gideon, Gideon. Gideon in the wine press. Huh? The wine press in, 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 in ghetto colloquial is, is where, you know, it's the stripping joint. Okay, let me help you. The wine press. When they put the grapes and stuff in the wine press, right? The first thing the press does is strips the grapes off of his skin. Strips it. In other words, when God is calling you to be something you've never been, he will strip you off of your old. He will strip you off of how you used to be. Because he's getting ready to put you through something. To take you somewhere you've never been before. To bring life to people. That's why you're here. That's why sometimes we go through the pain of failure. Because he's making us to be what he's called us to be. Gideon said, I can't do this. I don't know what. Well, if you are real, God, turn this, make this fleece wet. Some of us want to test God when God calls us. We got to have evidence. But what if God don't give you no evidence? He just say, okay, since you want to stay there, stay there. But I'm not saying one more thing until you get up and start moving. Now you're sitting down there for 10 years. And God is still saying to you, the last thing I told you to do, get up, do it. I'm God. I will redeem the time once you get up. That's why some people, when they finally make up their mind and realize that God been telling me to do this all along, when they get up, what they could not do 10 years ago, God redeems the time, and he does it in three months. Oh, family, you got to hear me. I'm talking to people who are multimillionaires. Since five years ago, God told you what it would be like. He gave you an idea. You haven't even done that. Sometimes God wants to take you out of a position at work. Hear me. But because we're so caught up on our qualifications and who we are, we don't move. Who told you God didn't already sign on to say that this is the end of the road here? I got something else for you to do. Some of us walked away from corporate America to preach this gospel. Scary feeling. Especially when you got a wife and husband or children who are dear to you. Well, you got to get up that day and tell yourself, you know, God is saying it and if God is saying that maybe he means it and if God means it then I, and then I need to get up and do something about it the crunch of it all then you're afraid to be considered failure because you might fail your wife you might fail your children you might fail in support 
And if you don't have a person that can walk with you in the matter, then you will become failure because that will be the sound of their voice. Am I speaking to you? Gideon was in that place. The fear of failure has caused many people to not experience the best God's got for them. Last thing I want to say to you is this. Then I'm going, we're going to finish this next week. Everything you want, everything you want is on the other side of fear. Everything is on the other side of your fear. God is not giving you the spirit of fear, of love, power, and of a sound mind. Here's the instruction for you today. I'm going to read it from Scripture. So you won't say, Pastor Sai, I just talked. I've laid down the foundation. Now let me give you instructions. Here's God's word. Joshua chapter 1, 7 through 9, it says, Only be strong and very courageous. Your first assignment. Be careful to do everything in accordance to the entire law. In other words, the word of God, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. In other words, be focused, be of one mind. Keep your vision, keep your focus there, so that you may prosper and be successful wherever you go. A focused mind is going to always be successful. Somebody who's intentional to not see failure as final they will fail multiple times but they will keep going the very light bulb we're looking at today a thousand times he attempted 999 times he attempted on that 1000 time he got it right and today we all have light what if he had quit what if Jesus now, after the 12-year-old experience at the temple, he went home with Mary, and Mary whooped him real good. For talking back to her and having her go all the way. I mean, I'm sure Mary, you know, Mary was a black mom probably. I'm looking for you, and you at the church, and you made me go all the way? Okay. Between that house to their house. Just slap. The the the, conk, the the of the head, the ear, of my mother's. Amen. When your baby's in acting right, ooh, I like get the get these small. All her boys big, right? You know, so she just right in the middle. I can imagine. But this this can you imagine that? I'm just this is not in the Bible. I'm just trying to get you to think. What a parent will feel like if they lost their baby. 12 years old. But from 12 to when he showed up at the age of 30. What do you think was being done? He's the son of God. He had to submit to a natural father until the right time. He had to understand the feeling of a human being until the right time for him to showcase himself as deity. He had to allow humanity to kiss divinity so that the earth can know that when God made us, he made us powerful. Am I speaking to y'all today? So we won't be afraid of failure. On the other side stand to your feet. out of time I promise to respect the time we have here respect your time as well come on lift your hands all over the house 